Welcome to Alchemical Science. I'm Jordan, an open source researcher who mostly looks into areas of science that are either very old, very new, or very esoteric. So, a few people in the comments have asked, some very skeptically and some out of genuine curiosity, uh, where they can find more evidence for and information about Malcolm Bendel's new technology. In particular, the plasmoid thunderstorm generator that he recently submitted to public scrutiny at the 2023 Tesla Tech Conference in the UK just last week. And as all of this is a massive dump truck load of new concepts and terminology, even to some who've been involved in the zero point energy research area for a while, um, and I've been spending a lot of time going through Malcolm's available videos and work. I thought I'd just do a quick video that gives you a brief preview of the information already available that you can go and check out more thoroughly yourself if it's what you're looking for. So, first of all, we'll start by talking about the public demo at Tesla Tech last week. Uh, Malcolm bought the parts for the Thunderstorm Generator retrofit with him um, to the UK for the conference and he didn't bring his own engine. Instead, with uh, two days before the conference started, they purchased uh, an oversized engine, just something they could find immediately locally available to them near the hotel where the conference was. And with the help of several of the scientists who were there to work on the technology for the first time, um, they helped Malcolm fit the thunderstorm generator onto the new engine. And so despite the new generator being much larger than the engine that Malcolm had originally tested the unit with, and despite another part breaking during transport, which was the Airstone, I believe, um, and another was hardly purchased from a pet shop, the invention was presented working just fine at the conference where people had a chance to crawl over it, um, check out the gas analysis live and ask Malcolm questions. I was lucky enough to catch the second day of the conference on the live stream too. And you'll be able to check out the recorded footage from this live stream and other bonus recordings of people asking questions and demonstrations of the generator in a couple days. It's currently being edited to be released on HowTube by Tesla Tech as well. So check out the link in the description to get access to those videos uh, when they're released. And you can already see a 20 minute preview clip just of Malcolm answering some questions about it with the generator there for now. So you can also find uh, Malcolm's full 10 hour or so lecture series on HowTube. Um, and if you check out the description under one of the videos in the series, you can get the full PowerPoint presentation that he's using. Um, and it includes the videos and photos and everything there. And that's what you can see I've been using in my presentations as well. Um, so he's been generous enough to release that. And so there's a bunch of images out there of the plasmoid thunderbolt generator installed on many different engine types, including in this PowerPoint, including petrol, gas, diesel, um, charcoal, and um, there's a video or two of that in that PowerPoint too. Malcolm and his European team, in conjunction with some of the high level students of Vortex based maths, are currently working on the world's first industrial scale implementation um, of plasmoid waste energy scavenging technology right now. Um, and although I know little on this myself yet, we should see more of this on the extra footage from the conference in a few days. I've heard some of the people are going to be talking about that potentially. And Malcolm is not being coy with letting us suss any of this out either. Um, after I put out the call in my first video for someone in Australia to help me build and install one ourselves, uh, Malcolm actually reached out to me personally to offer me the opportunity to go and check out the new technology myself. Um, and I've already been in touch with these collaborators and I'll be hopefully interviewing some of them and I'll be seeing it in action myself firsthand. And they weren't quiet about how they feel about it either. Um, after working on it directly with Malcolm on many of the prototypes, you know, this thing works and it's really incredible, um, is the story that I'm getting from everyone who's actually seen it so far. The boys will make you up the spheres and you'll have your own, you can build your own model there. We'll, we'll kit up your car, you know, and you can burn around the street like Mad Max with this bloody thing <laughs> sitting up outside the thing. So yeah, we're gonna be uh, doing that video sometime. My old X-Trail is ready to be converted. So to sum all of that up, um, there are tons of working prototypes out there. A number of people have worked on them and tested them. People have money invested, businesses have money invested, and at the same time, Malcolm's being really generous to the open source community too. He's given us loads of information and even offering little guys like me a chance to bang one of my cars soon and try it, which would be awesome. So um, onto the plasmoids. 
So I had one sharp fellow claim that it was ridiculous to release a working invention without explaining what plasmoids are. I don't agree, but anyway. So number one, you can see Malcolm explain what they are if you check out his lecture series on HowTube. And if you don't like his explanation, that's fine, but he does explain them. Um, and, but if you want to go and read about plasmoids from other scientists, here we go. So here's the joint 2023 paper from NASA and the University of Alabama Propulsion Research Centers, a plasmoid thruster for space propulsion. You can check out the links to all of these in the description. Then we've got uh, the 2020 paper by Lutz Jaitner, The Physics of Condensed Plasmoids and Low Energy Nuclear Reactions from the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Uh, also the 2017 paper, Toroidal Plasmoid Generation via Extreme Hydrodynamic Shear from the National Academy of Science. Uh, all the various papers by Ken Shoulders. Um, ones here, Electromagnetic Pulse Source Using Fluidized Electrons, um, and there's a bunch more by him. And how about the 1958 paper by Winston Bostick, um, Experimental Study of Plasmoids, as we can see here. Um, I mean, I'll be honest, I haven't read all of these yet, but if you're saying there's no science or data on plasmoids, you simply need to start looking a little harder. And not very hard at all, mind you, because you'll find most of them on the Strike Foundation website, uh, referenced by Malcolm himself, where they've been listed for nearly a year now. Another thing that I think speaks highly to Malcolm's credibility and the integrity of his work um, is Randall Carlson's involvement. And Randall's known Malcolm for seven years. His research has been foundational to Malcolm's own theories and inventions. And he's continuously promoted and stood by Malcolm's work um, and even assisted in getting it out to the world by mind mapping his lecture series with him. And if you've followed Randall for a while, you know this guy is not an idiot. He's an incredibly observant and rational person. And I understand even clever people get scammed sometimes, but if you take the time to start exploring Malcolm's plasmoid unification model and his lectures, you'll see that Malcolm's not just offering shallow ego-building praise to Randall Carlson when he says that his work is built on Randall's. Um, it, it actually is. They're using the same theories, giving the same numbers. Um, Malcolm's theories make sense, and Randall's acting out of genuine enthusiasm for the science. Um, that's the story he's telling, and that's certainly what I'm observing. And he's a geologist, not an engineer, but that's the thing, the thing with unification theories. Um, you know, the point is that the more we look, the more we find correlating data appearing throughout various areas of science. At any rate, check out Randall's podcast and his various courses, which I'll link to down the bottom. Um, his teachings really complement trying to understand Malcolm's theories. I'm doing Randall's sacred geometry course on HowTube at the moment, and it's really awesome. Um, he's teaching with the idea of you being able to practically use the knowledge in building architecture and art. And I'll be using the methods he's teaching for the rest of my life. And I'm not affiliated with Randall at all, or anyone else for that matter. Um, I'm, I just talk about research that interests me. And now flowing on from mentioning Randall Carlson's supporting work, um, we should also talk about the fact that the ratios and numbers that Malcolm's presenting in the plasmoid unification model and in his lectures, um, which is directly based on Randall Carlson's research there, can be found hidden in the designs um, of practically every ancient culture's buildings, temples, sculptures, artwork, written records, scriptures. And it seems quite evidential at this point that they all knew of this information and utilized things like sacred geometry and knowledge of advanced astronomy and astrology in all aspects of their life, um, including their buildings. And so I'd suggest checking out the voluminous research of um, Graham Hancock and again, Randall, to find out more about ancient structures and the angles and information we can derive from them. And also Robert Grant, uh, the cryptologist, who he has a really fantastic series on Gaia, uh, which goes through step by step, breaking down a lot of the hidden geometry and mathematics within um, the structure of the pyramids and the work of Leonardo da Vinci and a few other things like that. And so these guys have really, really opened my mind to the fact that the secrets of the knowledge of the past, uh, they're very likely hidden in plain sight. Like, we can see them, they're there. And then again, you know, for a lot of people, when they hear Malcolm say that we can find all of these numbers again, hidden in plain sight in the world's scriptures, and they don't see this as further evidence, but I personally believe that that's pretty biased. Um, like, you know, sure, there's 
sometimes problems with scriptures being burned or rewritten. They can't always be taken as a reliable source for historical data. But we can see a lot of this in any translation, you know. Um, India, for example, never burned its libraries. It has written historical records from thousands of years ago, um, including its scriptures. And in terms of Western spiritual history, um, you know, we won't just find Malcolm's maths and numbers in the Vedic scriptures. Uh, they're there in the Bible and the story of the Freemasons um, in Solomon's temple. And Malcolm's work is also building on the ideas of Marco Roden, who similarly references many world scriptures, including the Christian, Vedic, and those of his own Baha'i faith. And so this isn't wacky, it's relevant. Um, researchers are running around with their eyes closed, saying there's no artifacts of advanced technology. Like, when we're finding these numbers and this geometry again and again and again in ancient architecture, all of the world's scriptures and art, you know, maybe we need to consider, just maybe, that these structures and sacred texts could be the artifacts that we've been looking so hard for. Um, they just don't resemble the binary technology that we currently have and we believe is advanced. So next on Alchemical Science, we're going to keep delving into Malcolm Bendel's plasmoid unification table. You can already catch part one of the series. I'm working on part two at the moment. And you'll also see the next part in the series, uh, m my other series on vortex-based maths coming in the near future. So please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, it really helps me out with the algorithm. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for more on plasmoids and vortexes.